Sirius B was the heaviest thing in the universe, according to them. Mm-hmm. Well, so all of these things start coming together, and as I start to piece it together, I realize that I have the two pieces of the puzzle there in the midst, uh, the serpents and the, and the amphibians, uh, connecting it with Sirius. And, and then I, I, I'm introduced to exopolitics, like Dr. Michael Sala, and what they have derived from their understanding. And they find that there are two races controlling planet Earth, and these are the Alpha Draconans and the Syrians, and it turns out that we're looking at reptilians and amphibians, respectively, mm-hmm. and that they seem to have come together in a, in a mutual agreement, a marriage of, of uh, powers, of monarchies, to rule this planet and mine it for resources. Well, this story just continues to unfold before me and, and is uh, a mainstay of my research, really, and, and starting to realize that this might be the creation of civilization on planet earth using the the alpha draconians and the syrians and then we look to our our symbolism of the world elite or the uh uh what what would i call them (laughs) um well the power centers of planet earth the vatican the city of of england or london and washington dc and you'll find that right there with the vatican in the city of london that you've got the Vatican dressed up in his fish hat and his his cult of Dagon, and he's looking like a Syrian, and they've got, of course, the uh, the pineal gland there and, and and all of that in the Vatican, and each one symbolized by Osiris's penis, the big obelisk that they've put in each of these centers as well, and then over in in London, of course, you have the dragon, and so you're back to the Alpha Draconans. And even the exopolitical descriptions of these two races, one was to have all the high technology and knowledge, and this would be the Syrians or the fish people. And, of course, that's where the Vatican's at with their library and their high-tech data and all of the, 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 well, they just put the Lucifer telescope in Arizona so that they can start seeing the sun. Um, and things like this, the Vatican sent uh, Jose, or Benjamin Funes, the Jesuit priest, who had announced that aliens were our space brothers and didn't suffer original sin, and they attached him to CERN, and he's now working there with Gabriel Giante, another Jesuit priest with the CERN, and then they're launching this alpha magnetic spectrometer up into... Uh, uh, on the uh, you know with Mark Mark Kelly, uh, CERN's corporate logo of course is six six six, and <laughs> with the hyperdimensional portal involved, they've got Shiva standing outside their front door, and they control the world's largest computer grid system, the LHC grid, which is capable of mind transfer technologies. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> yeah, that goes into a bigger story. Now, according to Nick Bajic, he says that, that they have uh, computers that have the ability to plant a thought into your mind, and you wouldn't even know it wasn't yours. When I started looking into magic, one of the first books that I picked up was Real Magic by a man named Isaac Bonowitz. And he was the first ever academically accredited magician. He went into Berkeley University, and he defined magic using electromagnetic properties and outlined a thesis and proved it to the point where he was given the one and only uh, degree in thermaturgy or magic. And in his book, he was describing a psychic machine, and this was 25 years before the creation of the High Frequency Active Rural Research Program, or HARP. Mm -hmm. 25 years before this, he's designing a psychic machine, and it is uh, HARP to a T, an exact description uh, long before HARP was ever put out in America. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I would say that uh, these antenna arrays, when we start to look to them, they also uh, are quite possibly transfer mechanisms. As if you realize that ISCAT, which is the uh, antenna array in Solvabard in Sweden, is capable of sending Dorito commercials up to Ursa Major. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> yeah. That was their promotional scheme when IceCat came out. Now, IceCat's wrapped up in the Norway spiral, right? Uh-huh. But uh, when we start to look to what's going on with technological advancements, like the LHC grid capable of pushing exabytes of information, we are now capable of mind transfer technologies. And so when you add this and couple that concept with these uh, super antenna arrays, radio frequency transmitters that are able to transmit to Earth a major, perhaps we can even send our consciousness to another solar system. Yeah, it doesn't sound, uh, uh, you know, like it's anything would stop it. The uh, 
you know, one of the things I've seen in my own experience is that, you know, because of the work I do, we were kind of under attack with psychotronics and all these other things. And I saw these younger people, you know, that were, they always wore black, which was interesting. And they had their hands on these panels. And it was like a, oh, God, the only thing I can say it was like technological voodoo that they were doing. And, and I'd be hit by this energy and start getting nauseous or ill. And I'd go, what is going on? And I'd, I'd do the old remote viewing thing. And I'd see this guy sitting at a panel and I'd have to deal with it. But, uh, you know, I saw quite a few other things going on out there, too. And, and you know, the technology is there. The patents are there. It's all it's all there and, and uh, just for everyone to look at. And if we're seeing it in the in the main, you know, marketplace and it's available to look at there, then they've probably been working on it for 50 to 60 or 70 years and they've taken it way beyond uh, anything we can imagine. Absolutely. And this would really open the door to what I'm now trying to prove or at least uh, expound to the world, and that is the cloning of Akhenaten. Uh, and, and and family and their placement in the White House. Yeah, it, you know, you, you, you look at him and he does look very much like one of those pharaohs. When you look, uh, you know, you could put a hat well, he, on him and he would fit right in there. He is Akhenaten to a T. Uh, I actually split his time picture together with Akhenaten's bust, and you, there's not a slip in it whatsoever. They're, they are identical. But if that were the only case, it, it, I would have just kind of laughed it off or put out a little, you know, satirical artwork about the pharaoh up or something. But it turned out that it wasn't just Barack; it was Michelle, Malaya, and Sasha as well. And it wasn't as if they were I was picking random uh, pharaohs here. This is a singular family, and this is Akhenaten's family, and he is the the founder of monotheism. He is the reason that there is even an idea of a one true God. And when you look to Akhenaten, you'll find that even Manly P. Hall and the Freemasons worship this pharaoh, saying that he was born 2,000 years too early. Well, when you start to look into human cloning, uh, curiously, one of the first things that they were saying, back in 1972, uh, the Hastings Institute put together an ethics committee to discuss human cloning, because in 72 they were certain it was going to happen. And when they did, they, they proposed, well, what would you say if we recreated a finger or a, a limb or even another Amenhotep? <laughs> uh -huh. Now, Amenhotep is Akhenaten's first name before he became Akhenaten when he started worshipping the one true God. Uh, so even back in the first days of cloning, the scientists involved knew that Amenhotep or Akhenaten could come back. The reason being that mummification save, saves a viable cell. Uh, Discovery Channel even put out a, a, a movie on this called The Day After People. And they said, what would happen if an alien race wanted to bring humanity back after a massive catastrophe? And they said, well, they could bring back mummies through cloning. Because mummification has some mysterious property that we've never figured out. Because Lenin and Stalin are rotting in their uh, mummy wraps. Uh, we don't know the process. We don't know the secret. But something in mummification saves a viable cell for cloning. And it was done. In 1985, Nature magazine brought it out to the public. It was in the news. They had cloned a cell from a mummy. And so now we know this is entirely possible. Uh and as you say, they are many years ahead and farther ahead. Well, like I say, it's not uh, uh, just Barack Obama. It's also Michelle, Malaya, and, and Sasha. Because when you see Akhenaten's mother, Queen T, who was a co-regent, who really raised Akhenaten and then uh, gave the reins over to him, is Michelle to a T. I mean, identical. I, I split their face in half, took the picture of, of Queen T with Michelle Obama, split them in half, and people can't even tell I did it. They don't even know that the Michelle's face is the other half. You can't even tell them apart. And then I went on to realize that in the statue or the fresco of Akhenaten with Nefertiti, now that's his wife, and we're proposing that maybe she's Beyonce Nefertiti, but that's that's beyond the point. Um, uh, is Akhenaten with his two children, uh, Marita Ten, and I think it's Ankh Cinnamon, and 
these two daughters of his became co-regents. So I took the bus of, of Aksunamon and, and uh, Maritza Ten, and I put the, the girls' faces, identical match. Now, if I could take this one more step, the, the Secret Service even gave code names to the first family, and they gave to Obama the name Renegade. No. Uh-huh. <laughs> the things we could say about this, I mean, what does renegade mean? It means uh, one that turns on his political party and friends, one who turns his back on everything, one that is an apostate or even Christian turned Muslim, uh-huh. uh, a disloyal person who betray or deserts his religion. These, that's the definition of renegade, and that's the name they gave to our president. And then Michelle, she came up with renaissance. They call her renaissance, which is rebirth, rising again as to new life, reincarnation, you know, uh, renaissance. And then the two daughters were known as radiance and rosebuds. And these are the only two fa- other factors inside of the image of Akhenaten with his children are the rays of the Aten, radiance, and the rosebuds that they're offering up to the rays. So even to the Secret Service names. Now, One last part of this was that my whole thing was to watch Barack Obama weaponize space. In his platform, when he came out, he said, I will not weaponize space, and I'll make sure that there is no such thing. And, of course, uh, right now we can see that he absolutely has with the X-37B, the uh, HTV-2, and the stealth Falcon vehicles and such. And uh, they just launched uh, the largest rocket ever. I think it was 23 stories tall, launching up uh, Homeland Security stuff. Oh, no, yeah. They weren't going to tell us what they launched. but uh, no. So as I watched this, I was saying that what was going to occur was Barack Obama was going to couple the DOD with NASA, and that was the first thing he did when he came into office. And they were going to shut down the Columbia Endeavor for the discovery of Atlantis, which is our space shuttle program, and bring up the Ares space program, which, of course, Ares is Mars, the god of war. So bringing it into a war symbolism of it, but really... All of that would fall to the privatized space program of SpaceX and their dragon. And X is a symbol of Osiris, and then you've got the dragon, and this is Orion, and uh, and the connections there with with Elon Musk's SpaceX. Well, lo and behold, Warner von Braun had stated that they would they would use uh, a fourfold method to bring about the weaponization of space. It would be the, the the Red Scare, terrorism asteroids, and then aliens. Well, we had made it through the terrorist portion, obviously, with 9-11 and all of the things going on, 7-7 and everything else. Uh, So the next part of the puzzle, of course, was asteroids in order to get this into being. And at this time, I've been tracking these mysterious incoming bolides that were causing sonic booms and then followed by earthquakes. Actually, the first one I databased was back in 99 when they turned HARP on uh, to test it as a meteor deflection shield. And then, strangely, a meteor went directly over the HARP facility December of 99. And uh, the sonic boom sent all the Anchorage down to their basements. And then three, later, three hours later, hit with this earthquake. So I started tracking these. And I've tracked them and tracked them throughout the whole Obama. I have a whole section of my website called Space War News. And I tracked all these incoming bizarre bolides that had no rock. There was never a scientist that ever said there was a rock involved with these fireballs coming in, causing sonic booms, and then followed by earthquakes. Well, lo and behold, uh, as I'm covering all of this and talking about that and saying they need this major asteroid threat, uh, an asteroid nearly hits the planet in March of uh, 2009, I think it was. And they said, well, this wasn't really the asteroid that we were concerned about. The true asteroid that poses the biggest threat to planet Earth is known as Apophis. Mm -hmm. My jaw just hit the floor. Because Apophis is the Satan of Akhenaten's religion. (laughs) Now we have Akhenaten in office battling his ancient uh, serpent deity of destruction. Apophis, it was... More than I can handle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it's just this thing just seems so insane when you get into the the whole thing, and you can't. It's hard to tell who's wearing the good, the white hat and the black hat, and there's a lot of gray areas, and and uh, you know, I don't know. It, it's just beyond ridiculous. I try to wrap my head around this whole thing, and and uh, you know, it's it's just beyond insanity. The uh, especially with you know what's blowing me away is this chemtrail thing and how so many people 
I mean, they don't even pay attention to their own skies and these massive checkerboard patterns and, and what's raining down on them and, and the evidence is in. 